Well, excited certainly um, to resume this series. Um, I know how much it means to our entire state and uh, Lobo fans, Aggie fans, and it's it's great certainly that we could uh, be back in this building and obviously return it to them. Um, I anticipate a sold-out crowd, which is uh, a testament to – what our team has done uh, on the court in the community, as well as uh, our athletic department, um, working their butts off to market it and uh, promote it, and then obviously an amazing fan base. So uh, tough challenge, you know. It's a team with a whole brand new roster. Uh, almost beat Louisville. At Louisville had that game won, um, you know. So we know they're going to be uh, competing their butts off. Coach Hooten does a great job, and uh, we know certainly it means a lot. Have you ever coached against him before? No, I don't think so. Have you talked to your guys about it, especially the ones that were here? Um... Yeah, we spoke about kind of all the elements that, you know, obviously what happened last year had nothing to do with our program. Uh, but that was a, you know, you don't want to diminish that event, right? I mean, that was a, you know, a, a, a big uh, tragedy. Um, I don't think it had anything to do with the rivalry, but. Uh, it certainly happened. So more getting our guys to just understand, like, the biggest flex, as the young people say today, is winning the game. Uh, that's it. You know, n- nothing else. Um, I don't think in the two games that I played there were any incidents. I mean, I know there was them stomping on our logo. I was more uh, offended by our defense on the last play than I was by that. Uh, so I don't – our guys in the two years I've been here have been great, and uh, we certainly talk just about, okay, emotions are running high or whatever, but we're always going to act uh, the way that we want our, our players to act in every game. Since you brought up the stomping, they – this also, I mean, I guess you talk to them about how one little thing can be perceived by others as something bigger because they said the stomping was kind of predicated by Jalen House kicking their logo – and all that was I don't care about any of it. I really don't. I think Chris Jans did a great job to motivate their guys. Have at it. Like I'm not offended by either one. If Jalen House did a little like I who cares? I don't care. Uh none of that matters. Chris Jans did a great job of motivating his guys to come in here and win. We all it's a long season. Um and we gotta find ways to motivate our guys. I I, I as I said before. They beat us at the buzzer two years ago. I was not offended by what they did. Got a lot of respect uh, for what Coach Hooten's trying to do. So all that stuff is social media, Twitter reply. That none of that matters to me. Just to go back to last year when it all happened, and just I know we've reported a lot about what actually took place, but behind the scenes, what was it like for you with like the time frame? When did you find out? When was the discussion started? About- yeah, I got an early morning phone call from Eddie Nunez. That's never good. They, the ADs don't normally call at 5 a.m. to tell you how great you're doing. So um, when I heard it, obviously, you know, shock, I think, like everybody else. And, you know, I think whenever a crisis hits, the number one thing you try to do is gather the facts first uh, to see what exactly is happening and so on. So um, we had shoot around around 12-ish. And I remember at the time excitement because – we were going to sell out the building. It hadn't been sold out in a long time. Um, and so that was, I thought, a testament to our guys, not bringing Lobo basketball back, but certainly getting the fans back. Um, and then I thought, well, more and more I'm hearing about this. I'm not sure we're going to play the game. So uh, I just told our guys honestly. I said, guys, uh, this is what has happened. Still trying to gather a lot of facts. Um, let's have a good shoot around regardless of – if we play the game or not, uh, those decisions are uh, rightfully so out of my hands. Um, and they were great and mature about it, but um, certainly it was it was a just a odd day. How are you health wise? Yeah, a little bit of a cold, but I'm I'm bouncing back pretty good. Uh, uh, everybody, um, Mash won't play, but everybody else will play. Uh, Donovan Dent. Uh, didn't do much yesterday. We The guys that played more than 25 minutes didn't do anything yesterday. Um, and then we put guys through individual instruction and some free throws and things like that. Um, so I anticipate, knock on wood, we have a good practice today that everybody but MASH will be available. Is MASH possibly a, a no-go next week? I don't, I don't know. I, I would assume tomorrow and then we'll see. 
He's not, you know, he's not practicing. So yeah, that's conceivable. I had a conversation with Eddie Nunez just about, you know, some of the stuff that we've been talking about. He's excited just about the fact that this is actually happening now compared to last year. What are your thoughts and feelings about, you know, just the fact that this is going to be going on and the rivalry will continue? Yeah, I think it's great. Um, I understand the decision that was made last year. I, I thought it was the right one. I respect it. Um, I thought there was just it was too soon, especially the day, the next day to be playing a game. Um, so I totally understood it. I'm happy that it's happening. Um, it's great for our state. You know, I, I don't I tell people all the time I've lived in a lot of places. I don't think people quite understand how much the state of New Mexico loves college basketball. Um, so it's a great opportunity. Yeah, for for Lobo fans, obviously, in this building to pack it. Uh, but for New Mexico to be kind of a, a story nationally, um, because we do have and New Mexico State's had great success in the past as well. They've got great tradition. Um, they're two great fan bases, um, and certainly it's it's a, a great rivalry. So happy that it's uh, resuming. Coach, you have transfers on this team who have played in collegiate rivalry games, but how do you kind of explain this to the freshmen and kind of what the intensity might look like in a game like this? Well, I think they've all played in big games. Um, I never make one game bigger than the other. I, I just refuse to do that. Um, and our fans, although they, you know, like this – game I'm not one to say this game means more and I hope our fans understand that the right way um, I coach every game like it's the most important game of my life and I hope they approach that the same way um, but I think more than anything there's the element of a sold out crowd there's the element of that rivalry so you have to you know you, you got to just play the right way um, regardless of where you're playing who you're playing so that's always been kind of my message the way that I've coached uh so hopefully on games like this uh it resonates even more seems like with I mean they're a rebuilding program right now just that's what they are but regardless of that it seems like rivalry games are always going to be close no matter what you've got Colorado Colorado State the other day I mean how do you coach a a game like this where regardless of you know uh, the talent level it might be a little closer than you would like oh I I I coach them all the same um my approach will be the same for this one as it was for Texas Southern, uh, UT Arlington. They all are important to me. Um, and, uh, you know, we're going to do our very, very best to prepare them to go win the game. Um, we know New Mexico State, Coach Hooten, has been very, very successful for a long time. i got a lot of respect for him and his staff for what they're trying to do. Um, you know, so anything – you know, every every opportunity is a great one for us, so nothing changes on our end. I know you like when I ask you Ken Palm questions. Mm-hmm. I like Ken Palm. You guys are top 40 in the country in defensive efficiency. That's number two in the Mountain West. Are you guys the second-best defensive team in the Mountain West, do you think? I, I don't know the other teams uh, defensively. I, I, I think we are improved. Um the personnel has certainly changed. I think that has a lot to do with it. I think the shot blocking element that um, Nelly and JT bring, I don't. I, you'd have to figure that out. I, they got to be tops in the Mountain West after what seven, eight games, however everybody's played. But shot blocking has helped. Uh, increased length on the perimeter has helped. Um, and it, just a, an understanding of you, if you want to win, you got to defend. You got to rebound. Rebounding's been good. Um, so I don't know where we would rank amongst everybody, but I have really, really liked the defense the last couple of games. How's Good. 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 Yeah, he uh, he didn't do much yesterday, but the guys that played 25 minutes uh, or more did not. Um, so hopefully he'll feel better. He said he felt better yesterday. So hopefully another day. How, well, how did Jalen feel after his 30-plus minutes? He seemed good. Yeah, he was, he was kind of a... Uh, he was a guy we told not to do workouts, and he did them anyway. So he he was bouncing around good. Uh, are you a little surprised at how deep that you've been able to go into the, into the roster and play as many guys as you've played? Uh, not really. No, I, I I'm still trying to figure out how to play Sebastian and Isaac and Q more. Um, it's not personal. I tell them all the time, and it did nothing crushes me more as a coach when we're winning and I've got three or four guys that don't play. Um, I promise them it's not personal. 
they're all really good players, um, and I'm trying to find ways to get them all in, but you can't play 12, 13 guys. It's a uh, reality of it. But um, I think our staff has done a terrific job of recruiting in the two years that I've been here, and I think we've got a lot of uh, good pieces. Some of your staff and a few of your players had a pretty big high school game here last night. Can you just talk about how you've seen the game just grow here locally since you've joined? Um, I'm trying to say how how I don't get a violation of some sort. Um, I no, I think I could speak on it. I mean, I think the uh, whether it's uh, AAU high school coaches we've been able to get over here, whether through it's through a clinic um, that we did in the fall. Um, you can it always starts at the grassroots level and you can tell uh they love basketball you know and it's important to them and so when you get really good coaching at the grassroots level i have a son and daughter that are in it and and it's terrific i mean it's they're getting real coaching and so it starts there and it just continues to build so um we want to recruit locally as well as nationally and if you're the best player in you know the state of new mexico we're going to recruit you hard so uh, they're getting coached very very well and uh, as i've said many times i know college basketball is important to this community and you could tell um when you see, when you go to these games locally what does jason's team do what, what, what do the aggies do defensively i know they're man to man yeah man to man and they want to get physical with you, right? they want to be physical they want to pressure um they played, obviously, a very tough schedule, I mean, at Louisville, at Kentucky. Um, you know, I think as he builds his roster, uh, you're going to see that, that identity of, I would assume he'll be all man-to-man, pressure, um, disrupt you. Uh, you know, I think that's certainly what his teams did at, at Sam Houston. And he's, he's, I mean, he's been very, very successful for a while. There's some similarities to what Jans was doing with them, too. Getting rebounding and some... Yeah, I think Jans probably a little bit, slower of a game maybe but um other than that i i think it's some similarity i don't think he worked for him did he no but but there are some certainly some similarities what are they like uh i don't know do you know yet if there's if femi's playing if they're guard he's playing yeah he was playing he played last game he didn't play against the university of the southwest or the one before though he did i think yeah yeah so what are they like I'm assuming he's playing um with him as opposed to yeah i mean he's a bigger guard right so that's an interesting dynamic and he could probably play the one two three four um you know so you have to have some size on him i don't know how tall he looks tall um yeah i mean he is in person uh so that's a unique dynamic that i don't think we've really seen in the non-conference um they've got good talent you know they do and he's obviously a high major guy you know they've got a lot of transfers like everybody else does i had a you know, my staff kind of give me the rundown of where everybody's from, and it's just funny how college basketball's evolved into that. Um, but I know Coach Hooten inherited, obviously, one of the more difficult situations, and he had to kind of hit reset and do that. Um, but they do have some good talent. I mean, they're right there with, with Louisville, right there. Um, and uh, he's going to get them to play really, really hard. Just the fact that they're basically an expansion team, does that kind of water down the rivalry? I know that when you get on the court, the fans are riled up about the uniforms that the guys are wearing, but that's that's a brand new team, brand new coaches. Well, their situation is extremely unique. Um, now, in today's world, when you fire a coach, almost everybody's going to start over all the time, um, just because of the transfer portal. I mean, kids are they're looking for reasons to get a new, fresh start, and when you fire a coach, that's going to happen. Now, theirs was extreme, um, so I don't. I don't, I don't know about watered down or any of that. I mean, I know that we're going to play a game here tomorrow and it's going to be most likely sold out. Uh, so I think that means it's a pretty good rivalry. Um, and I think Coach Hooten and his staff will, hopefully not tomorrow night, but they're going to they're gonna, uh, get this program uh, on the right track because he's, he's done it for a long time.